I can watch the stream. And All the right, right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Talk Podcast 34. Today we are here with Jack Williamson. He has a, well, Honda it's Accord. A Honda, uh, it's a Honda Accord. And then we have Martine, who has a GTO. He does videos on his girlfriend's Corvette and is making way too much noise, so I'm muting him real quick. Um, <laughs> then we have David, <laughs> who has a channel called the, the, the Drift Guy. Um, David, what was the car you have again? Uh, I have a 300 ZX, and I just bought a Ram 1500. Okay. And then we have Dalton, who has a uh, Mustang. What year was it again? 05. 05 Mustang. I'm in the and phone. Then we train. have my Sorry. friend Lee, who helps with my channel a little bit, or is going to be. Uh, he has an S10 that we're currently going to be fixing up eventually. <laughs> right, Lee? Yeah. Um, so now into our first topic. Okay, then, Martin. Who's dying? Somebody I've in Martin's been... house. <laughs> Everyone's dying. I thought okay, I so my mic. For, for our first topic, we're going to be talking about the 2020 Ford Explorer ST that's going to be coming, which I personally think it's going to be interesting since they already have the Ford Edge ST, but the Explorer ST is supposed to be on a new modular rear-wheel drive platform, also available with all-wheel drive. The engine options will be a 2.3-liter turbo four-cylinder EcoBoost. The 3.5 liter V6 will be killed off and replaced with a 3.3 liter naturally aspirated V6, which is the current baseline engine in the F-150. And then there will be a 3 liter twin turbo V6, which that will be the ST model's engine. Then there's also going to be a hybrid variant as well, also available with a 10-speed automatic transmission. So, what's everyone else's thoughts on this Ford Explorer ST? Fuck the hybrid, dude. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what are they doing with the hybrid? Are they? Is it like the Not Dodge? Sure the new Dodge just came out because they just use their hybrid for the start and stop. That's gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I think the ST model will be kind of cool. I'll be back one sec. I'll be back on camera one second. Okay. I guess he's having fun with his Snapchat, I guess. I need $32,000 base price. Don't have too much fun. That's a lot of money. Yeah, for a Ford Fo or Explorer. Yeah. And that's just the base price. That's not even like for the ST option or anything. I mean, I'm assuming the ST option would probably be, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 grand, maybe. Probably somewhere along those lines, is my guess. I mean, I don't think there's really been a price that's been revealed yet. For that uh, much, I'd rather go get a used SS. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking new cars, Martin. I mean, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I would rather go get a used car compared to half the new stuff. It's like, but. New car wise, I mean, can I feed him in a minute, babe? I know the Ford Edge ST is supposed to be pretty quick for what it is as like an SUV, but I don't know. I think it might be interesting. It might not, but I mean, like with the hybrid thing, I know Dalton over here is like gay, but yes. it's like it could be worse. It could be full electric. <laughs> We lost Martin. Like, yeah, we lost Martin. If I want to say anything, I think it's like I think they're gonna probably just do the hybrid thing, kind of like like I said, Dodge is doing. They're using it just to start and stop the vehicle to keep the load off of the uh, the engine. So they pretty much use it as like a jump starter, like a heavy duty starter. Yeah, that that, that could be possible as well. I don't know. It could be possible. The 2020 uh, Dodge Rams, they don't have. They have a hybrid system, but it doesn't do anything far as far as like giving you extra. It's like an electronic supercharger almost. It only gives you a little bit of power in the beginning to restart the vehicle and get your low end torque like numbers up. 
Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Yeah. Um, so what's, does anybody else have any other comments? Lee, you have anything you want to say about the Explorer ST? Um, I was wondering about, like, the leader engine and the vehicle and how good the aerodynamics are all around with doors and whatnot and how well it would I mean, it's like, an SUV. You know, it's not going to be that so, aerodynamic. Well, I yeah. want, like, what about, like, the Durango? They put a badass exhaust in the Durango. It sounds good as hell. Is that going to be like this? Like, no, but um, which Durango are you talking about? Like the SRT Durango or I mean, I my neighbor's got two SRT Durangos sitting out front and they sound badass. And he's got the North well, That's the SRT R2. Durango. If I remember well, correctly, R2 I think that R2 has too, and that sounds badass too, dude. Yeah, but don't those have V8s in them? Yeah, they have the uh, 6 yeah, five. What Jeep did with their SRTs is they went and they put speakers in the exhaust. Are they going to be doing the same thing? Speakers. Jeep put speakers on their SRTs to make them louder for the exhaust. Okay. I, uh, I uh, where where is putting freaking cutouts um, in the exhaust? I don't know. I'd like to know no. where the hell's driveway demons when you need him. He's the SRT Durango expert here. Why couldn't he be here tonight since we brought this up? <laughs> from what I can understand, I, I think from what I've seen, it's just like the new Camaros. And the Mustangs, what they do is they have a pipe that goes from the uh, from the intake manifold, and it pipes the noise into the cabin from the firewall. Right. I thought, yeah, that makes sense. I knew they that's, did that, but that's I don't. What they do, mm -hmm. but I don't think they have speakers for for noise for the inside. I don't think it's not a. Yeah, it's that's not. An not... I, I don't. I was like, when he said that, I was like, what? No, I don't think so. I thought that they, maybe they, maybe it's just in the inside. No, that's that's only the the I eight, bro. Any any. Usually that happens with hybrids. Yeah, because there's no noise and like you get worried because you feel like your vehicle is not on. So they make they they substitute engine noise so you don't like freak yeah, out. Yeah, that, that's kind of like that's kind of like set. with the electric cars. It's just yeah. like you hear. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but no. Sounds it, pathetic. Cars, but... In fact, that's what some people don't like. This new pipe that goes on there because when they want to put a cold air intake. They have to delete. They have to do have a deletion kit for that. Mm. Let's see. In fact, watch. I'll get you. Watch. I'll I'll get you a picture. I know exactly Oops. what he's talking about because it's it's a pipe that goes from the intake manifold, where right a, right in front it's of a the resonator throttle pipe. pipe. Right, and all it does is just uh, puts noise from the engine and the exhaust into the cabin. That's all it does. Okay, that so do you have that picture for us that you wanted to show yeah, us, Martin? Or I'm I'm gonna send it to you because remember I can't I'm on my phone I can't do what you do. So let me let me send it to you here. Give me a second. Yeah, but then I gotta mm -hmm. save it and find it and bring don't it up. Worry and... about it. You're done. <laughs> so well, let's just not worry like, about it. Let's see. It's it's gonna be like 400 horsepower with a V or a 10 speed automatic transmission. What the ST? Not... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be around 400 ish. I mean, that's not bad for an SUV. 365 to 400 range with the uh, twin turbo setup. Hmm. Dalton, so. you a little cold over there? I'm and how much is it going to cost? <laughs> uh, car and driver said 32000 for the base that's model. But that's yeah. the base model. That's the base model. That wouldn't be the ST. Oh. So therefore, the base model, base model Explorer... Which I'm assuming the base model Explorer would be the one with the 3.3 liter naturally aspirated V6. Is my guess. And You're then I'm do assuming. That Sorry. And then I'm assuming either the Explorer Sport would be the three the th 2.3 liter turbo four cylinder EcoBoost. Is my guess for the Explorer Sport. And then obviously the three liter twin turbo V6 is the STs. So... You know, as you already know, I'm not a Ford guy, Jonathan, but if I was going to buy a Ford, instead of spending that kind of money on that, I'd just go get a Mustang uh, GT. He's got if a you're going to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like then again, that's like $70,000 difference. Or, or, or if you want a Ford or a big family you do? That wants to go fast. Hold up, hold up, hold well, up. You're both talking at the same time, one at a time. I was about to, gi I was about to yeah. give you the solution, okay? You go get the, um, the Taurus show. True. Family. I think they still make those, actually. Talking about how them? much? But... I'm not sure. I know they had 
I know they had some in like the the twenty tens, but like the twenty tens, like I don't remember which year, whether it was twelve, thirteen, fourteen, I don't remember. I don't remember if they still have the tourist show or not. My stuff I'm not sure. Fusion with the two point uh the two point turbo, that's pretty fast. I mean, I'm gonna say it's quick but not fast. It's <laughs> it'll keep up with my Mustang. It's hence it's Mustangs quick. are slow. It's quick. Well, especially the well, three valve, like the automatic. If I get a thing um, a Cobra, like a like a no three Cobra with the supercharger. Okay, so Matt Rosenthal in the comments says, "If I'm going to buy a family car, I'm buying a CTSV or an SS." There you go. I'd go CTSV. I do too. But- but if you happen to be a Ford fan, I guess the only choice is the Taurus show if it's still available. Yeah. Oh, I mean. And then uh, that crazy gamer said, I don't really like the Ford Explorer ST because I don't like the way they look. Fair Have they shown pictures of them yet? Because uh, um, the only picture n- I've seen. Not really. I just looked them up. And it was like. Either... And... Well, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be for 2020, one. so. I don't think they've shown any pictures of the STs yet. Right, they always showed the <coughs> the super camouflage one. Yeah, so I'm assuming it might be the same as the current Explorers, but they might be a little bit different. Like maybe you know a different fender or something, or different wheels Unibody. or whatever. What about a unibody? They got a different. Um, they got a new uh, front grille piece see. on them too. Is there any unibody or frame? to it like most vehicles or I don't know all it says here is that the new version is supposed to be a new modular rear wheel drive platform Hmm. because the current explorers are just all wheel drive if I remember correctly yeah I think they're going to have uh, they're going to have the they're going to have the rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive uh, options so there's the 2017 uh, Taurus show Okay, so they are still making it. Okay. Mm-hmm. There so I mean, because I mean, obviously there's the dedicated four fans, and the yeah. GM and Chrysler. But I mean, if I was gonna spend that kind of money and I needed a car for the family, that would be it right there. You know. Yeah, it's a nice car and color and everything to it. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that you have available is like the car that my mother-in-law has, which is the uh, Infinity G. Um, what is it called? The the Q50. And it's the Sport. Yeah. What'd you say, Dalton? I think it's called the QX50, maybe? No, that's the the SUV. It's the Q50. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's the Q50 uh, Sport uh, Redline. What year is the vehicle again? This one's a 17. Nice. Yeah. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Um... So this is actually quite a controversial topic, in my opinion, because some people are going to love it, and then there's some people that are definitely going to hate it. So what's everyone's thoughts on Toyota announcing that they're going to have Amazon Alexa integration in their future Toyota and Lexuses in some 2018 models and 20, most of 2019 models? That is a horrible idea. People I'm better not... they it with Am- or Amazon and not Google. Okay, well, look at it. people are starting to like ignore. You can't talk to on the phone in the car. Have it up to your ear. That's going to distract people even more than just talking on the phone. So wouldn't you that know the, end up being more dangerous in the long run? No, the best thing to have is either Apple CarPlay or Android Audio. Yeah, but like that's that's, that's where that's where everybody's got to go. So that way, like right now, GM and uh, Chrysler support both. Um, so everyone now needs to uh, follow suit. In fact, uh, even Mercedes is, has um, uh, both too. So everyone now needs to just catch up and just use those two platforms because your phones automatically integrate. Now what they need to do is come up with a system that will communicate without having to plug in your USB. In fact, that's what Salamandran was talking about not too long ago on the last podcast. Oh, you, you know, guys want to be- hear something funny? I think Amazon Alexa has some flaws because I was at my Nana's house one time and she has one. And my Nana had to ask Alexa five different times what the weather was before she would respond with an answer. (laughs) And then my Nana was getting pissed. And another thing, like if you have that in a car and it's not working properly, 
people are going to get pissed, which could equal to road rage, all this other shit, too. It's just, it's kind of weird that they went and then instead of making their own platform like the Uconnect or something, they just kind of took whatever system they have. So are they going to put Wi-Fi in all their cars, too, then? I have no idea how that's going to work. Yeah, because but... uh, Chrysler and GM already has that. Yeah, they have like, uh, the Uconnect, and then uh, Ford has a U-Sync or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's, yep. it's called Sync. Yeah. Which supposedly, that was the best, uh, you know, car, you know, integration for your phone. But Uconnect, I think, beats it. And now, this last time I got to drive a brand new Impala with the Apple CarPlay, that thing works amazing. All you do is Does click it only work with on Apple, your steering though? wheel. No, but you can oh, work with Android. All you do All is do the is update. I, my dad's got the 2017 Silverado. You plug it into your I you literally just plug it in. Like you there's the USB parts, you plug in USB, plug it into your phone, it'll automatically come up with everything saying CarPlay, would you like to Eglow access and stuff like that in your phone? In you fact, uh, Car Guy Eleven has it on his phone, or I'm sorry, on his car, where it'll work with either Apple or Android. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, like for instance, my girlfriend's Stingray, because it was one of the first ones, it didn't come with that option. So I'm unable to use Apple CarPlay or Android Audio. That's one of those nice features, you know? Right. Because you, I like the, you I like the sync function. Messages. That was probably my favorite one that I've, I've used. Cause I ran a bunch of cars. So out of all of them, I had a Ford was it Fusion, the SUV one. And it had the, uh, the sync. And that thing was great because it, it literally put your entire phone pretty much right there on the dashboard. Right. So. Wait, I just, how would the Alexa work with Apple phones and stuff? It, wouldn't it have to, Amazon would have to have a phone that it would integrate with, wouldn't it? Yeah, something's going to have to change. I'm not sure. I think they're going to have to pay for some sort of licensing for it. Yeah, to they're going to have function. to work out some sort of deal with Apple and um, Android, Android because neither of those will sync with the Alexa. Right. My whole point, they're going to have to pay for the licensing. It's mm-hmm. going to cost them more. And the you know from the get go own software. Then again, they might be trying to do it maybe because Alexa is already an established kind of software. Maybe they're trying to bank off of that, but I don't think it's in their best interest to bank off that. Yeah, I think they're they're better off sticking with either, you know, Apple CarPlay and Android Audio. Definitely, yeah, and make it compatible yeah. with their because everyone else is using it. Hell, even Austin Martin is using it too. And Lamborghini and Ferrari. It's yeah. Aston Martin, not Austin Martin. Just saying. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. Ride his ass. Wait, who's up? Who's ass, Dalton? You just trying to ride his ass. Uh, that's a little concerning. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Oh. Okay, next topic, and off Dalton's topic of writing ass. Um, God. Okay, so who's playing with the microphone? David, that's like really loud. David. Yeah, I was trying to have, uh, open a bottle one-handed. Oh. Okay, so a company called Resvani revealed the Resvani Beast Alpha X Blackbird, which. Hold on. Let me bring up a picture real quick. This vehicle right here. And they're only making five of them. It uses a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. It's turbocharged and makes 700 horsepower. Has a six-speed manual or sequential six-speed with paddles. Uh, It has a 2.90 to 60, $225,000. Weighs only about 2,000 pounds. So I can imagine how fast this is. And the regular beast is supercharged and making 400 to 500 horsepower. So what do you guys think of this car right here that was revealed? Well, first off, it's beautiful. Just me? I would personally rather go with a brand already more established, such as like a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, something like that. That has been around for a long time. They've made a name for themselves. I cannot guarantee this car is going to last or be a decent car. You don't know. Well, I, I don't think you spend that much on a vehicle to, to wonder if it's going to last that long. It's kind of like the Venom. 
the Hennessy Venom, you know? They're, they're yeah. so exclusive that who the heck's going to service it? Yeah. Who's going to work on it if something goes wrong? It's That's exactly why Salamandran hasn't bought well, Look, Look how the doors open. See, I just it's, see so. It's many like things. one of those things where, like, if you if you're only gonna make five of them, like, you're not making it to like you don't buy that car to drive it a th- hundred thousand miles. Like that car ends up with like that car ends up with like three miles on it or four miles. You Some guy in Dubai buys it and puts it in his puts it in his house. Exactly, you're not driving that car. I don't see. I, if I'm gonna buy a car, I want to drive the car I'm buying. To me, I don't see this because you're never going to get it serviced. You can't guarantee it's going to be a good car. You can only guarantee it's going to look good. That's all you have. Let me let me put it this way. The only person that should be buying this kind of car is either Bill Gates, Elon Musk, you know, the kind of people that have so much money that they'll never run out of money. Those yes. are the kind no, of the people that, that buy this kind of car is the people that live in, like, Dubai. That there have, you like... go. Like a prince or something like that. Yeah. They buy it and like they a, put it in their like sheep. top story of their freaking their high rise. Okay, so we do have a comment down in the comments from Gregory Salvatore. Uh, he says, "I was a big fan of the Beast until I found out it was just an overpriced Adam." I thought the same thing. Kind of sounded like I would rather think I'd have an Expo or an Airedale Adam or something like that. Kind of faster, and I think my opinion looks better. Okay, Greg also says it's an Adam with a body kit, and then he says it's a Honda. Accurate dealers service them. Hmm. So it's to me, it seems like a more upgraded version of the NSX. Then wouldn't it be? Possibly, I'm not sure. Gregory Salvatore is like it's an Ariel Adam, pretty much. And Acura yeah, services. That's exactly what I thought. And then Linchester is like, search for Porsche Blackbird. Well, I already know Porsche one Porsche Blackbird, but you might be thinking of something else. I'll search it just for the hell of it. Just see what comes up. I think I know what's going to come up, unless there's another Porsche Blackbird that I do not know about. What's that, uh, that other okay. super rare car that they're designing? Okay. It's like the V16 that's like 3,000. Yeah, that one. 5,000 horsepower. I mean, it's not 500,000. 5,000 horsepower. God damn. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fucking horsepower. Holy oh, 5, How much was that car? Um, How much was that car again? The Devil's. Uh, 225,000. I'd rather go get the Tesla Roadster. For that price, exactly. I'd rather go, I'd rather be driving a Lamborghini or a Tesla or Ferrari or something. McLaren. Like that. I think you can even get McLarens around two hundred some thousand. You can get a two hundred and seventy. You get a five seventy S for that for under. Like a, and then like what Lanchester was talking about in the comments was this. I'm assuming, which I already knew this is exactly what was going to come up. It's from the Japanese oh, the... Uh, anime. Uh, shit, Mid- the Wong on Midnight thing. thing. That kind of looks like my yeah. Porsche. They call it the Blackbird. It still looks like a Porsche, though. It is a Porsche. It's a 911. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a 911 Turbo. Just a model. I, I knew. Life. I knew that's exactly what he was talking about hey, when man. he said that because I've been watching that series for a little while. Isn't it? And it's a actually tuning quite company? interesting, actually. Isn't it a tuning what? company that buys the body shells and turns them into like a badass car? Basically. Kind of like the, yeah, kind of like, exactly like Callaway or Hennessy that buys those Porsches. I mean, it's um, possible. I mean, that one was used in a show, but... I remember seeing that on, on this uh, YouTube program that uh, was talking about cars that you didn't know that existed. Mm. Okay, like... so... Oh, what are you saying, Sorry. Martin? No, I was just going to say, it was just like like you just said a minute ago. It's just like a Callaway or Hennessy or, you know, like a, what's the other one? Um, uh, good, I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but it'll, it'll come to me in a minute once I remember. But yeah, like basically it's a tuner car. Yeah. Okay, I got an interesting topic for us. It's not about any new vehicles or anything. It's more opinion based. So, if you could only own four cars for the rest of your life and you can never sell them, what would they be and why? Who wants to go first? You have to maintain them. Well, I think I'd definitely go for something more like a Ford Raptor or 
just so that way I have something that if I need to do something, I can actually go and I can move shit. I can get through shit if I need to. So I think that would definitely be one of them. I wouldn't go with a Raptor. I'd probably go with like a 3,500 Commons. Yeah, I want Raptor. I'd pick a Raptor over Commons. Well, if you you have to maintain it and you have to keep that one vehicle for the rest of your life, I wouldn't buy a Raptor. Well, do keep in mind we have four vehicles to pick. Yeah. So one of them them obviously has to be a truck. I already know exactly what I would get. Okay, Martin, how about you go first? Since you okay. know it all here. Well, I don't know it all, but... Well, I mean, I know would, all your cars. I, right, okay. <laughs> so, basically, what I would do, personally, I would pick a Ram Rebel for my pickup truck, which is badass as hell. It's way better than the Raptor, and it's more unique and more exclusive. I would... Yes, it is. <laughs> I would pick... I would pick the Holden Monero VXR500, which is, like, the better version of my car, uh, of the GTO, I would get the the new uh, ZR1, uh, and I would probably get like a Nissan GTR, and for my four door sedan, I would just get like a CTSV. Okay, I got a little Not bit bad. of everything right there. All right, uh, who wants to go next? David, Dalton, Lee. What what choices I, do I have again to pick from? Whatever, anything, anything you yeah. want. No, 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 no. Just pick four cars that you would want to have for the rest of your life. Um, like, like cars that you can afford to maintain. That's a good question right there for me. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it's going to take me a minute to Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Four this four is cars pertaining to I can maintain. Oh, hold on, Lee. Uh, Martin will Gregory be walking Sal- in 20 years. Gregory Salvatore says, ha ha, Martin will be walking in 20 years. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll, be 50 in, I'll be 50 in 20 years. I don't know what I'll be doing then. <laughs> Why would I be walking in 20 years? Because I didn't pick an electric car? Probably riding around electric scooter that. by then. That's probably, what he's, no. that's probably why he's saying that. He said he he would get a Corolla because it would last forever. I, I guess the only, have to walk. the only V6 technically would have been the GTR, right? The yeah, would have so. been a V8. Yeah. Yeah. So who wants to go next, Lee, Dalton, or David? Hmm. All right. Well, I'd probably end up with a Cummins. It doesn't really matter. Probably like third gen, Good second choice. gen, third gen. Uh, 3500 because you know that's that's gonna last you forever and uh, then maybe not the body but that engine will run forever though the engine <laughs> might but the body what might not about the body <laughs> but you gotta understand Jonathan that the body on the newer um, dodge trucks are way better than the like early 2000s and mid 2000s Okay. Yeah, the, the, I the wasn't sure if the new ones had gotten better or not. I wasn't sure. Yeah. The, well, they did this. The they did this, this weird thing the, uh, in the second gen in that, on the body and frame of the uh, 2000 models as well. Yeah. Well, they what they did was they they wanted to make them quieter, so they filled the uh, they filled the cavities with foam, and the foam held water, so then they would just like super they rot. Held, it held water, mud, and all the salt and stuff from the roads too that made them rust really, really bad. Yeah. So, what's your uh, other three, David? Um, I'm probably gonna go with a Nissan, probably a 350, 350Z as like a fun car. Because you can still have all the fun you want with them, and they're not that expensive. It's in model too. True. Yeah, and and they're and relatively then, uh, inexpensive to uh, maintain. To, mm-hmm. And I mean, they make everything for them, so it's not like you can't find a part for it. Um, probably, probably a GTR because I just you know you have to own a GTR if you like Nissans, and like something. What the hell is that car called? The uh, probably like a Trackhawk. A Trackhawk. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Pretty good. All right, who wants to go next, uh, Lee or Dalton? 
What? So who wants to go next, Lee or Dalton? Doesn't matter. You can go Lee. I'll go last. Um, is it? What are we talking Technically, about? I'll be going last. So four four cars that you would uh, if you had no limit of buying, like no cash limit, but you had to maintain them. What uh, car would you want? To, afford to maintain them. That's yeah. the key word there. <laughs> Right, but the car like, costs nothing. I yeah, like Chevy. Just, I like Chevy Novas, but I'm not sure like um, how that would like keep up unless I kept a garage cap, didn't take it out a whole lot, other than like make sure everything's up and running, you know, so it ain't sitting around and not being able to move. Um, maybe a Camaro V28, whatnot. Uh, what generation, Lee? Uh, old school. I like the old school. So first, second, third. I guess first. Did yeah, they did have Z28s then. Okay, I I couldn't remember if they had Z28s for the first gens, but I remember they do. Yeah, they okay, do. Okay, so first gen Z28. What else? Until now. Um, yeah, like a Chevelle SS. Like if it was like custom now, like. Dude, where you could get any surface rust expensive. like on the body or nothing, you know, like you, hey, you know, Lee, area maybe. You realize um, you do have a family, so you might want a four door. You got yeah, one car. Four door, yeah, four door. Uh, <laughs> He's like, what family? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh crap. <laughs> yeah. You better hope Amy ain't watching this. No, no, no. <laughs> no, she probably will later. Oh. Uh, so yeah, I heard what happened like about a minivan, a minivan or something crazy. A minivan or an SUV. Minivan. Minivan. Yeah. Well, that's that's something. Didn't yeah. See yeah, that came okay. out of left corner there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, what when the you hell have just... a family, you got to think like a minivan, well, that's why you, uh, SUV. That's why you get a Dodge Durango or like, or something like that, you know? Yeah. You a, yeah, Dodge yeah, Durango. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, you know, you get like a freaking I don't know, like you know, a Tahoe. You know? Jimmy Tahoe's are nice, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would never right. get a Ford Explorer or anything like that because, you know. <laughs> yeah, Ford. Ford Explorers with the transfer case and whatnot. And it's like a headache. Exploder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Dalton, your turn. Whatnot, yeah. Well, I think I'd definitely pick up a Raptor. Just, you can move shit. You can get shit done if you need. It's really good for off-roading, too. Yeah, that too. And probably a Denali XL, just because like it's big as shit. You can throw anything you need in that, like people wise. Like if I need to move a bunch of people, I can, and they're badass. Mm-hmm. It's like a Cadillac um, without the tag. Yeah. Probably <laughs> um, a BRZ because they're fun to drive. You can mod them. You can do whatever you want with them. Um, decent. Easy to maintain, whatever. And then probably an R8 or something on that order. Just for the speed. Okay, so I guess now it's my turn. Um, well, I know first option is definitely going to be a Silverado. Don't know if I'll have a Duramax or gas. Don't know yet. Probably Duramax, but I'm not sure. Um... <laughs> Huh? Why would you pick up a gasser? If it's unlimited money, I'm going diesel. Last one longer. <laughs> True. So, yeah, I'd probably take that. And then definitely a fourth gen Camaro. Z28. Probably do. Maybe, or an SS. Never know. I mean, I have a little bit of a thing for the Z28 because that was the first fast car I was ever in, was my friend Leroy's 99 Z28. So, yeah, Z28 would be nice, but if SS is what I have to get, then, yeah. Either way, they're better. Uh, might as well get a ZL1 for if you're going to go Camaro. Right? No. I want the fourth gen. Oh, okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the ZL1, but when you floor it, you don't really feel the sense of speed like you do in the older cars. Yeah, until you hit that sudden stop. Wow. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. No, I'm just saying in case that ever happens, which hopefully never. But 
Anyway. I mean, hey, at least I can say I died having fun. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, he enjoyed. He died enjoying what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, what about like a uh, like if you're thinking like a survival thing, you should just probably get like an Oshkosh fucking six like six wheel drive military truck. <laughs> yeah, Martin. Maybe we should give you that so you can be in your safe space. What? I'm not a millennial. Come down. Hey. No, if you were a, if you were a millennial, you wouldn't even drive that because the gas mileage is so terrible. Fuck you would be worried about the environment. <laughs> I wouldn't drive anything. I'd be. I, I'd have a bicycle. I look, don't know, I don't know. Look, just if because me and Dal- well, Dalton, are you considered a millennial? Yes. Well, anybody born in like eighty, like I think it's like eighty forward is considered a millennial. 80. Okay, so Lee, technically you're a millennial too. Oh yeah, boy. Technically, <laughs> I am. Yeah, so Martin's the only one that isn't. Yeah. Well, I'm a Generation X. Wait, hold up. What year were you, Martin? 82. Just at the cusp of the cutoff point. I'm actually considered a Gen Z, but I'm on the border. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same place there. Um, God, I got to get two more cars. Fuck. I don't know. To be honest, I might also take a new ZL1 also. Just because of the way those things handle are freaking amazing. And surprisingly, they're actually pretty spacious on the inside. Surprisingly. I was surprised. I was thinking, oh, it's going to be like the C7 that I got to ride in. My knees are against the dashboard. My head is like touching the fucking ceiling. And yeah, it's fucking cramped as hell. See- Dude, I'm five foot eight. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm six foot tall and have a wide body kit. That I'm is sorry, a problem. Did you say your name was Frodo? Because <laughs> you said 5'8", right? 5'8 is not Frodo height. Like, that's like 4'8 is Frodo height. Come on. <laughs> All right. I need one more. I got two Camaros, a truck. What else do I want? A million dollars. Bitch, I don't know. What? A million dollars to go with it. And that'll give me plenty of money to upgrade the Camaros, but yeah. um, I don't know. Anybody got any suggestions for a fourth? Well, I'd go with yeah. something. Me, uh, let me pull up the name of this thing real quick. Actually, you know what? I know exactly what I'm going to pick. I don't know if I fit in one yet, but I'll find out. Um, I'd probably, just because I've been watching this one show and I've gotten a real interest in this car... Probably a Nissan Fair Lady Z. What the hell is that? Uh, 300ZX. Hold on. Let me bring up a picture. Well, Fair Lady is a 300ZX. That's it. That's the Japanese, like, JDM name of it. Let me bring it up. I've never heard of that model. It's it's because it's not oh, a model. It's just one. it's a 300ZX, but it, like the sub name, like the code name for it, when it was being designed in Japan, was the Fair Lady. So oh, like, gotcha. if you, some of them in Japan will have. Oh, that's not yeah, a fair. Yeah. That's not a Fair Lady. That's a 180Z. Ah, eh, whatever. But again, the, the the code name for that car was Fair Lady when the, it was being designed. So that's where. People call them the fair, like the fair ladies. It was the Z series, like the 180Z, the 160, and the uh, 140, or yeah, the 140Zs, and then it yeah, switched this, to the 300s. This particular car that Jonathan's showing us is just about the time when uh, Nissan uh, became Nissan, right about the time that they quit being Datsun, because my uncle had the one prior to this that was still a Datsun. Yeah, because right, I think there's also that's... Dotsons that look like this as well. Yeah, they look exactly fact, the same way. In fact, what's that's... what's crazy about it, it reminds me, that old Dotson reminds me of the um, Lamborghini, uh, what the hell is it called? It's that, it's a 1950-something Lamborghini. It's it's the, what the heck? It yeah. looks kind of like one of those. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. no, yeah, the Mira. Yeah, no, not the Mira, the other one, the GT. I'm trying to remember that. I don't remember that the, one. The that Daytona. One. Is that what it is? The Daytona? I it think has it's very Daytona. similar. It's, it has similar lines. Hold on. What is it called? Lamborghini. It's a Lamborghini it's a GT, Daytona. I think. Like a 19... 
Oh God, is it like Lamborghini? What? It J- just put a GT. 1960s GT Lamborghini GT. It's like one of the. It's one of the very first Lamborghinis that uh, Ferrari Lamborghini 60s? created. I think it was either 60s or 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 early 50s or late 50s. I'm sorry. So let's go back. You're being an ass. Actually, actually, it's right there on the bottom. That see that silver car. This one. There it is. This up one? There. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. That's that's the other one. That's the Chiraco, I think. Yeah, talking about this one, aren't you? The fourth one over. This one. Yeah, on the very top. This one. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's a very it, the very orig- the the very first one of those has a very um, a Japanese look to it. Yeah, it doesn't look like the the was, Z though, but it does. No, oh, yeah. no, but there was the, it has a f- like familiarization, you know. Like I'm not saying it looks identical, but watch well, to look for it. Hold on, give me a second. Yeah, it has good uh similarities. What? Because they had changed the body style right before the Mura. I just don't oh, remember what year it was. Watch, hold on. Okay, Gregory Gregory Salvatore says no. The original Fair Lady is a two forty Z. I don't know. I just thought it was a Nissan in the show. Is what I was thinking it was. I always thought two forty Z because that's what you mostly hear of, not the Nissan version. But <laughs> that Linchester is like good choice, J.A. You are a man of culture, Will. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but let's see. I think we could add one more topic in here. And, and oh god, I said that wrong completely. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Yeah, it was the uh, 240, the 260, and the 280Z. Okay. So I think we'll end it here for tonight. Um, unless anyone in the comments has anything that you would like us to discuss. And then uh, definitely check out uh, Martin on inst- or Instagram, LS260GTO, and his YouTube channel, which is linked down below. And then we have David, that the Drift guy. Check out his channel. It'll be linked down below as well. Also, check out Dalton on Instagram. And then... So it's this Lamborghini here. <laughs> it doesn't have, like, really any social media on Facebook. <laughs> um, yeah, my Facebook's my family. And... Your what? My Facebook's my family, so don't hit me up on there. <laughs> um but yeah and we will uh see you guys next video